Hey guys, Judd coming at you from the carriage house and today we are animating some line icons. Line icons. Line icons. There's some icons with lines, we're gonna animate them. So we are back in After Effects today, just attacking it with tutorial after tutorial. In this tutorial we're learning about, that's a cat. In this tutorial, we're learning this thing called Trim Paths, which is this effect, this animation in After Effects that once you learn it, you're going to use it over and over again. It's so versatile. It's got so many applications. So let's get right into it. Let's slide on over to the Mac. So to learn how to animate these icons, we're going to use like a weather motif. And we're going to do this animation here of this three-day forecast. We've got this comp set up, and basically the idea is that the icons are going to animate in these three circles. In Adobe Illustrator, I did do a template of these icons, what they're gonna look like, so I'm gonna drag that on. And this is what we want them to look like, but we need to recreate them in After Effects so that we can have full control over the animation. So what I'm gonna do is hit T, and that brings up my opacity, and I'm gonna drop that down to like 40, just so that I can draw over it and see what I'm doing. We're gonna focus first on the sun right here, so I'm just gonna scroll to zoom in, hold down, space bar, click and drag, so I get over to that. So I want to recreate this with a shape layer. So I'm going to go up to layer, new, shape layer. And I always like to rename my layers just because these After Effects programs get so big and so complex that it saves you a lot of time if you just spend the extra second um, to rename the layer. So this is going to be sun. And down here I want to add uh, an ellipse. And I also want to add a stroke for that ellipse. And the stroke, I'm gonna make like six uh, for the width and see how that does. Now, as you can see, uh, if I zoom out, it creates the circle dead center in the middle of the composition. Um, so really all you need to do is um, click your direct select here, um, click and drag so it's somewhere in the middle. Now we can fine tune that later. So I'm gonna zoom back in here. And it looks like six is a good width for that. I'm just going to use my arrow keys to fine tune the centering here. And then in my layer under ellipse path, I'm just going to increase the size till it gets to be the exact same size. Um, so it looks like 150 should do it around there, 155, okay. So we have the sun all set and ready to go. We just need to add the rays. And the way we do that is by adding paths. So under the contents over here, if we click add path, that brings us up a path here and we get the pen tool. So you just click, hold shift to keep it straight, and then you just add another path, hold shift, and just go all the way around the sun here. It doesn't have to be pixel perfect, but you want it to be close, because once we zoom out and things start to animate, you're allowed a little bit of room for error. Okay, so now we've got all of our rays and we've got our sun, and now we need to add the trim paths, and that's what's gonna allow us to animate this. So right next to contents, if you go add, down to trim paths. Now that's gonna put a trim paths attribute underneath all of these shapes. And that means that this one effect is gonna affect everything above it. And basically what trim paths is in a nutshell, is it tells you how much percentage-wise of a path is visible at that time. So right now, 100% of these paths are visible. If I go to end and start to scroll them back, then you see if I go 50, only 50% 50 of the paths are visible. And I can see right now I've got some like very squared off ends to my uh, shapes here, and I actually wanna get rid of that. So under stroke, I'm gonna go to line cap, round cap. This is gonna give us rounded ends. So if I zoom out, Take a look at our composition here. I want that sun to start animating in right as the circle behind it comes in. So right here, I'm gonna bring all the paths down to 0%. Click keyframe, hit easy ease, which is F9 on our computer. And I'm gonna go ahead about one second, and then I'm gonna add 100% attribute. So if we play that back, let's see how that looks. Okay, not bad, not bad. Just gonna adjust the speed graph. Let's see how that how that does. Okay, not bad. If you want to learn more about speed graphs, check out my video on the After Effects text slide out effect. So now, if we move on to our second shape here, we 
you've got a cloud and another cloud behind it. So there's a couple ways to make this shape. You could do this with one path and get crazy with your bezier curves and get this to kind of line up so well that it looks perfect, but that's gonna take a long time. What I'm gonna do is, since this cloud is broken up into one, two, three, four circles and a rectangle, I'm gonna create all those shapes and then we're gonna combine them. So let's make a new layer. I'm gonna call this layer clouds. So with this, we are going to add stroke to it. We want that stroke to be six points wide. Okay, so let's start building our cloud. Just add an ellipse. Now, as you can see, the ellipse was added, but there's no stroke applied to it. And that's because our stroke attribute right here is above the ellipse. So I just want to drag the ellipse above it. And this time, instead of moving the whole shape layer, clicking and dragging like we did last time, I'm going to move the shapes individually. So if I go into this ellipse path, there's a position attribute and you just click and drag these to get them kind of lined up where you want them. Play around with the size to make sure that you're getting it close. Now again, this doesn't have to be exact, but it's the closer the better. Okay, so I've got this ellipse pretty close to where I want it. So what I'm gonna do is actually duplicate it and I'm gonna open up that second ellipse that I just created and I'm gonna move that. And I'm just building this cloud out. Duplicate that, move it over. Okay, so my circles are good and I wanna add a rectangle for the end. And I want this rectangle, I want the corners to come to the very bottom of these circles here. And then I want it to come up and basically connect all of these circles. Okay, so we have all of our shapes of our cloud and now we want to connect these all together. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna add this attribute called merge paths. So if we go to add and click merge paths, it's gonna literally just take all of those shapes and make them one shape. So now when we apply our trim paths, it's gonna treat all that as one shape instead of individual shapes as you can see. So we wanna duplicate this cloud so that we can have this cloud behind it as well. So the way we wanna do that is we need to group all of these ellipses that we've made and this rectangle and this merge path. We wanna make this all one group. So what we do is go to contents, go to add, group. That's gonna make us a group here. So if we click, hold shift and click all this, we can put it all in that one group. And we also wanna move that merge path to that group. Okay, so now that we've got that done, we can just duplicate this group, open it up, go to the transform, and this is the transform just for that group, not for the whole shape layer. So if we mess around with the position, it'll move just that one cloud. So now in group two, we want to add trim paths. And also make sure our other trim paths one is in our group one. So we want to separate these groups completely. They have all their own attributes and everything. So now to get that cloud to look like it's behind the front cloud, we're gonna use trim paths in a different way. We're not gonna animate it just yet, we're just gonna adjust it. So if we just play with it a little bit and bring it back, and also come down to offset and just tweak that offset, we can see that it can line up. So this line cap, we wanna do a round cap. The key is just playing with it until it looks just about right. If we zoom out, we want those clouds to animate right when that circle comes in. So right about here is where we'll start animating it. So in group one, trim paths, set that to zero, make it easy ease. Go ahead about one second. And 100%. And the same thing for group one. So with group one, we don't want to trim the path all the way to 100%, we want to do it to 55, that way it keeps that shape. So with this, we'll start with the end. We'll click a keyframe for the end. And then 0% for the beginning. I'm gonna highlight all these keyframes, come over to my speed graph and give it the same look as the one we did for the sun. So pull it all back like that. Now let's take a look at where we're at. So now we want to animate the rain cloud. And instead of recreating this cloud and recreating the animation, we're just going to duplicate that cloud layer and get rid of that one of those clouds and add some raindrops. So let's do that. So if I come to clouds and just click command D, 
I'm gonna rename this to rain. And then I'm just gonna click and drag it so it lines up. Open up that layer and get rid of group two because that's the cloud that we don't need. I'm gonna zoom in here. And with this one, I want the cloud to animate before the rain. So I'm gonna keep that cloud as its own group and I'm gonna create another group for the rain. So if I go to add group and then add path, I'm just gonna draw this one path. And to make sure that I get the same angle, I'm just gonna duplicate that path and keep moving it. So for group two, I'm also gonna add trim paths. And right when this background comes in, right about here is when I want the cloud to start animating. So I'm actually gonna go into group one, which is the cloud. And I'm gonna move these keyframes down a little bit. Then I'm gonna go ahead about half a second and that's when I want the rain to start animating. So under trim paths here, I'm gonna make that zero. Go ahead a second, make it 100, go into the speed graph, make it match. Zoom back out, we'll see how this looks. So now you've got a very valuable tool in your toolbox, trim paths, animating line icons. You can apply this across many different things in After Effects. If you found this helpful, please click the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. We're gonna be learning some more After Effects stuff in the future. As always, thank you for stopping by the Carriage House. I'll see you guys next time.